Hello and welcome to the Pastor Well Podcast. I'm Herschel York, Dean of the School of Theology at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm also pastor of the Buckron Baptist Church in Frankfurt. The Pastor Well Podcast is dedicated to helping those who serve the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ be faithful in ministry. And we like to do that by engaging in conversation with people who have demonstrated faithfulness. And there are a few people who have done that like Steve Gaines. I am Delighted to welcome you, uh, Dr. You. Gaines, to Pastor Well. Thank you so much. Uh, so you are the uh, pastor of the Bellevue Baptist Church in uh, Cordova, Tennessee, the Memphis area. Also past president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Father of five, grand uh, how many grandchildren? Fifteen grandchildren. I've got four children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. four children. Yeah, I was grand, thinking five. I've got Grant and then I've got three girls, Lindsay, Allie, and Bethany. Well, uh, and man, fifth grandchildren is a whole nother level of joy. Isn't it's, it? it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, and your wife is Donna. Right. Uh, tell us about Donna. How long have you been married? And We've been married uh, 40 years this June. And uh, she is a wonderful woman. She loves the Lord. She's as well read, if not better uh, read, than a lot of my friends that are pastors. Yeah. And uh, she, she is a great teacher. I tell everybody if we were Methodist, I'd be the associate pastor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she is a wonderful girl, loves the Lord, and she teaches a Bible study, uh, women's ministry at our church, and they've got close to a thousand people that come to that. They do that uh, on Tuesday mornings uh, for the ladies that don't work outside the home. They do it for Wednesday nights for the ladies that do, and it's just a great ministry. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm a fan of hers. I just. I don't know Donna well, but observing just the <clears throat> way she does ministry, the joy yeah, that she has. I know it. Being yeah. your wife and a pastor's yeah. wife. She loves It's the obvious. Lord. Yeah, it's obvious. And mm -hmm. and then I'm, I, the, I know two of your children fairly well and uh, just think so highly of them. That doesn't happen by accident. No. And so I'm, I, 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 I'm an admirer. If, if our kids are good, which I think they are, it's because of Jesus and their mom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I understand both things. Yeah. Uh, how old were you when you were saved? Well, I'm going to find out when I get to heaven, all right? Okay. Uh, when I was seven, as a boy, I, the best I knew how, gave my heart to Jesus. But then when I was a 10th grader, I started getting away from the Lord. I was playing football, and uh, it happened for me when I opened a can of beer, <laughs> It was like opening Pandora's box for me in the 10th grade. And I went for about four years where I really ran from the Lord and did wrong. And, um, but when I was at UT Martin, I was playing football there. And a coach named uh, George McIntyre came. And he was a real great Christian guy. I love the Lord. He started the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I started going to their meetings. And my freshman year, uh, in fact, it was uh, 40 Four years ago this month, I went to a little country church and got right with the Lord. And I tell everybody, when I get to heaven, I'll find out if I was saved when I was seven or when I was 18. But I know that I nailed it down then, got rebaptized or whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. and uh, have been trying to walk with the Lord. I'm 62 now, and I've been trying to walk with the Lord ever since. Uh, and you felt a call to preach or ministry or uh, well, how soon as, after that? Right. Uh, I had played football in high school with George Guthrie. I don't know if you know George or not, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a great admirer. Of yeah. His. George is a great guy. I sat behind him in Greek. So he, he teaches uh, at uh, Union. Is he still at Union? No, he is. Uh, he's up in Canada now in Vancouver. What's okay. What's the name of the college there? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, um, but at any rate, uh, I tell everybody I sat behind him in Greek and some regent. I think, in, right. Yeah. And I've been behind him in Greek ever since. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's quite brilliant. brilliant. But anyway, he and, I, he and I played football together. He was a quarterback. I was offensive tackle. And uh, we started a little singing group. And we started singing in jails and nursing homes and high schools. And we started going around everywhere singing and stuff. And then I quit football at UT Martin, transferred to Union. It was my junior year. It was his freshman year. And we had our little group I called it Living Water. And we went all over the place singing. And somewhere in there, somebody asked us to preach. And uh, we started preaching some and loved it and uh, just felt the Lord calling us to preach. And that's, that was while we were at Union University. Uh, and your first church was where? My first pastorate was my first church. I was a youth pastor. Back then we called them youth directors. You may yeah. remember those days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at First Baptist Milan, Tennessee. But then my first church to pastor was in Texas 
at Lakeshore Baptist Church in Lake Dallas, Texas. And they, they were just so sweet. Uh, we were, I was 25 when I became a pastor. Didn't know what I was doing, man, you know, but just Were had you in seminary at that point? I was, I uh-huh. was. Don and I had been at seminary. Uh, we went in 1980, and I started as their pastor in 1983. Grant was one month old when I became their pastor. And so I've been pastoring ever since. Uh, you ended up at First Baptist Gardendale, is that right? Correct. Uh, uh, I went I went from uh, Lakeshore, I went to uh, Jackson, Tennessee, to West Jackson Baptist Church. And then from there, uh, in 1991, went to Gardendale's First Baptist Church in Gardendale, Alabama, which is just north of Birmingham. It had tremendous growth while you were there, didn't it? Yeah, the Lord really blessed. We uh, had a great time there. We had a really good staff and just really good people. That church has been a good church for a long time. Kevin Ham's there now. He's done a great job. Yeah. Knocked it out. He's been there for 15 years, 14 years, whatever. And uh, it's just a really good church. But, uh, yes, we had unusual growth. I, I was, It was kind of what I would call a revival, you know, for, yeah. a, for a while there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's I met you during those right. times. I don't know if you recall the first time we met. I think it was at Ronnie Floyd, nineteen ninety six. Yeah, back and, in the fall. Yeah, uh, he it was a, like you know sort of a Paul Timothy thing. And right. Several right. of us. I, I remember around that. Kevin table, Ezell was there. Kevin Ezell was there. Grant Etheridge. Grant was Etheridge there. was there. Right. I yeah. think maybe Danny Forshee was. I don't remember Danny was there. I met him at another one, uh, but you know it was it, the, it was an investment in the lives of right. What was then young preachers? Yeah, yeah. We're the old guys in the <laughs> right, room now, right. uh, but man, the, it, what a what a joy it was to meet like minded guys. Right. And uh, Ronnie uh, Floyd was really innovative in that, bringing people like that together. Yeah, really and good. he gave you a glimpse of what could be. Right. Uh, so I followed your ministry ever since then, and what happened at Gardendale was just great. I I remember I had a CD of the choir at Gardendale from your yeah. days there. Yeah. You sang. You sang on it. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, Man, it, it, it just encouraged my heart in a lot yeah. of ways. Uh, during that time, uh, you you had a friendship with Adrian Rogers. Right. He had you speak at Bellevue several times. At, at what point did you did it even occur to you that you might be a successor to Adrian Rogers? I never really wanted to. I mean, who would yeah. want to follow him? I, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I met him at the Tennessee Baptist Convention back when I first went to uh, – West Jackson Baptist Church, and it was 1988. I knew of Dr. Rogers, but I didn't know him. And uh, Jerry Sutton had made a pro-life, anti-abortion resolution. And believe it or not, at that time, the resolutions committee turned it down. They were not pro-life. They were pro-choice, if you can even fathom that. It's just, yeah, it's hard to believe, but <laughs> I remember those days. Those days, yeah. man, that's right. And so uh, I was talking to Jerry at lunch, and I said, well, I'll just resurrect it. And I'd been reading a book on uh, abortion in the early church and how that they, the, the Romans would have them drink poison and all that stuff to, you know, kill the baby. And then they'd give the birth with a baby that would be dead and whatnot and how uh, people like Tertullian were battling that. And so I got up and I, I raised a motion. I said, I'd like to uh, resurrect his uh, motion for this pro-life. And I read it. 3,000 people. That's back when everybody went to the convention, you know, yeah. at Tennessee Baptist Convention. And uh, we were there at that church in Nashville. And uh, I was nervous. I was 30 years old. And I I said, you know, Tertullian, I ended with that. I said, Tertullian was debating this one day. And uh, uh, he uh, said to the ladies, he said, how many of you have had a baby stand up? He said, how many of you would say that what you carried for nine months was not a human being? And nobody would say that it wasn't. So he won the debate. And uh, so anyway, make a long story short, the thing passed overwhelmingly. There's, I'm getting somewhere to this, I promise. No, I'll, I'll, but, I'm uh, enjoying every minute of it. So, so we get through. Everybody's shouting, praise God, you know, we're pro-life and everything. And, and the, the thing got, it was voted like 98% were for it. And so I'm, I told Donna, my heart's just beating out of my chest. I'm 30 years old. I had been at West Jackson just a few months. And so I'm walking. I said, let's go to the bookstore. Let's go somewhere. And so Donna and I were walking around and I heard this voice, young man. <laughs> <laughs> it was the voice. It was like the voice of God. <laughs> it was the voice. I said, oh no. <laughs> and uh, he said, who are you? I, and I started to say, I ain't nobody. <laughs> I told him who I was. And we met. He said, I want you to come down and have lunch. And we had lunch and we hit it off. You know, I started memorizing scripture as soon as I got turned on to the Lord. He memorized scripture, and we just 
We just started quoting scripture. I, I never wanted Bellevue. I, I'm, I'm, it's not like I didn't want to go there, but I'm just saying, and, and I wouldn't go there, but I'm just saying it, it wasn't like a, something I pursued. Uh -huh. I just wanted to be around him. My yeah. church was growing, and I just wanted to come see him. And so whenever I'd come home to see my parents, I'd drop by and see him. He'd go to lunch with me. We'd talk four or five hours, and he just poured into me. And then he asked me to preach August the 4th of uh, 1996, so uh, just a month or two before I met you. And um, it went really well. God blessed it, and then he had me back every year. And about the fourth or fifth year, he said, you need to really pray about coming here one day. And I said, Dr. Rogers, I don't want to follow you. I said, whoever follows you is going to get killed. Yeah. I said, it's going to be tough. And I said, you're just a legend. And I said, I might follow the guy that follows you, but I don't want to follow you. Yeah. He said, no, it won't be bad. And for one time, he was wrong and I was right. Because yeah. <laughs> it, it was not easy yeah. following Adrian Rogers. I, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I just can't even imagine. Oh, man. Because, uh, first of all, I, I think it's fair to say Adrian Rogers is probably the greatest man I ever met. Mm -hmm. He he was just godly. Your name is Legion. And I mean that not yeah. in the bad sense, but in the good sense. There's just a lot of people who would say that. Yeah, absolutely. Know? And there's no way you can at least initially be seen as in any way comparing to him no. favorably. No, uh, Plus, he stayed there. Right, so he 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 lived two more months uh, after I came. He died uh, November, and uh, right after I came, and I, I, I helped with his funeral. Yeah. I gotta I gotta tell you a story. Uh, Tanya and I went out to dinner with Adrian and Joyce uh, during the time it was he hadn't he was thinking about retirement. He hadn't right. announced it yet. And they were, uh, Joyce Rogers uh, is the one person who was not overwhelmed by the Adrian mystique. Right. She held her own with him uh, and was not intimidated by him. And they had a real marriage, you know. Right. And uh, he had bought a, a sailboat. Right. And it was like parked in their yard. Mm -hmm. And she, she started fussing at, at, about that to us. She said, Adrian bought a sailboat and it's just stuck in our yard. I mean, we live in Memphis, Tennessee. What's he going to do with a sailboat? And Adrian said, now, Joyce, when I retire, we're going to move to Florida and I'm going to sail that sailboat. And she said, Adrian, when you retire, we are not moving to Florida. And uh, she started, they, she started pulling me and Tanya into it. We were like, ah, we're not getting in here, you know, at all. Uh, I just want to point out. They stayed in Memphis. So yeah, you see right. who won that that's argument. Right. That's right. She, that's right. And she, she was saying, like, our family, our right. friends are here. Right. Was that hard, uh, first of all, accepting Belle Bellevue at all, and then secondly, with him sitting there in the congregation as you preach? Well, you know, the hardest thing for us was on, on the other end, and it was leaving Gardendale. Yeah. Uh, our kids, uh, my son Grant was the captain of the football team, captain of the basketball team, Mr. Gardendale High School. Uh, Lindsay was Miss Gardendale High School. She was the beauty queen and all this stuff and ch cheerleader and all this. And so we just had it. Gardendale was like Mayberry, and we just had a great time. We were there uh, 14 years, thought we would be there the rest of our lives, and had said we're planning on being here the rest of our lives. So when we went to Bellevue, uh, God gave us a clear call, and we were called of the Lord. We were not called of man. We were called of God. I think that's obvious. I mean, it, 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 was, it was the Lord. And it's just like he stopped everything at Gardendale and moved us up there. And uh, when we came, it was tough. Uh, you know, I didn't really know the staff. We had built a great staff at Gardendale. And, uh, you know, I, I told them when I came, I said, you know, Dr. Rogers could just open the Bible and you're, that's good for 1,500 people right there, you know, because mm -hmm. you're, I said, and I'm, I said, there's only one Adrian Rogers. Right. I'm not Adrian Rogers. And I said, I can't be Adrian Rogers. I can't be like, I said, I've got to be me. And I said, the only way I know how to do it is to build a staff team and we'll have programs and we'll pray for God's anointing. And I said, that's how, that's the only way I know how to do. And so that's what we did. The first two years were hard and I won't get into all the minutia of it, but it was just, uh, you know, a tough transition and it was hard. And the only way Don and I could have stayed is if is that the Lord called us? I mean, he 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 yeah. gave us in the Word. I mean, I can show you the verses that he he gave to her and to me. Yeah. And it was so much in our hearts that we were supposed to stay. But honestly, there were days, and I would just encourage pastors out there that are going through tough times. If God has called you to that place, God will see you through. Yeah. 
And you know, one of the things that I love about Jesus, uh, I just got back from Israel for about, I think, 15th time or whatever, but we always go on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus said to his disciples, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Mm -hmm. He told them before the storm, we're going to make it to the other side. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking that out of context. I really believe that. And so when you're in a storm, you've got to keep your eyes on the Lord, not on the waves and the, and the wind and all that stuff. And we drew, Don and I drew closer together and closer to the Lord during that time than any other time in our lives. Yeah. And so, but it was hard. It'll it was, do one or the other. Yeah, you, you, you're right. It you, will either it will either pull yeah. you away from your walk with the Lord and pull you away from your spouse. That's even, exactly right. And get you bitter. Right. Or it will draw you in. We prayed over each other. I'm telling you, we, we prayed scriptural. We prayed blessings over each other every night, laid hands on each other, and we'd fall asleep in each other's arms, you know. And I, it was one of the, it was a bitter time, yeah. but it was a sweet time. The two things that I want to uh, I want to throw in here in line with that. One is I I believe that the success of your ministry, and by that I mean God's definition of success, right. not, not the world, but the success of your ministry <clears throat> depends on the strength of your calling. Right. You'll quit if you don't really feel called. Absolutely. And 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 what you're saying bears testimony to that. That that sense of calling, like Jeremiah, you know, there's a fire in my bones. I cannot keep silent, right. even when I want to. You right. know, that, that calling compels you, right. constrains you. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so essential that young pastors get that sense of calling. Boy, I, I'm going to tell you, you don't volunteer for the ministry alone. You, you, yeah. you, need, you need to volunteer, but it needs to be the response to a call from God. Yeah, I... I I fear that there are a lot of guys going into ministry because they, they basically want to do a Christian helping profession. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, become a first responder. So there's lots of ways to be a right. Christian right. and serve the Lord uh, in helpful things. But a call to preach and a call to pastor is a specific call. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And uh, I, think I could take you. In fact, we were just in Gatlinburg. And when I was there, it's right before I met Donna, while I was still at Union, right before my senior year, I finished reading the book of Revelation and got down on my knees and prayed. And I felt just in my heart, the Lord was saying, okay, I've already called you in the ministry, but now I want to call you to preach. You're going to be a preacher. And man, how do you know that? I mean, I didn't hear a voice, yeah. but I knew it in my heart. And mm -hmm. God was saying, I want you to focus on preaching. And then, you know, every church I've gone to, I felt a call to that church. And so, yeah, but, but the, going back to the other, I mean, I felt a call to the ministry and then I, I felt a call to preaching and I felt a call now to be a pastor for almost 40 years. So, yeah. the, the other thing that resonates with what you said is my belief that if things are good and strong at home between you and your wife, you can handle anything out there. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how good things are out there if it's bad at home. <laughs> It's well, bad and, everywhere. Uh, let's just get real on this. You know, we 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 have struggles sometimes. Uh -huh. Not not not. I'm not talking about bad thing. I'm just talking about. You know, it's amazing to me, Herschel, how Friday and Saturday we have to really be walking with the Lord, or we'll get into it, and it'll mess everything up for Sunday. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm so comforted to hear you say that. Uh, Tanya and I had one Saturday night. Oh man! And, and I, I even told the church about it in my sermon yesterday. It's yeah. like. Yeah. You know, and it was over. It, yeah. uh, for us, it's always communication. Yeah. It's just that, you know, I'm, I got the typical male brain and <laughs> I don't always communicate uh, clearly or at all, you yeah. know, and, and, and that will frustrate her. Donna will ask me sometimes, what are you thinking? I'll say nothing. She said, that's impossible. I said, no, it's wonderful. That's right. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's yeah. a gift from God. Men do it all the time. <laughs> it is a gift from God. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. Well, uh to hear the testimony of the two of you praying over each other and praying scripture over each other is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. that in the midst of the pain, there's this intimacy that God develops between you. Right. And, uh, and you came through that. Right. Honestly, you came through that. And uh, one day know, at a time. Yeah. You, a lot of times my goal was just to make it to the church, to do what I was supposed to do. And that's what you have to do. Don and I uh, got this philosophy during the whole thing. You just do the next thing. Yeah. And you say, you know what? That's what Elizabeth Elliott said. Yeah, you just you just thing. do the next thing. You don't you don't have to I don't have to be the pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church. Right. That's right. I've got to serve Jesus Christ. Right. And and I love the people at Bellevue and I love the people at Gardendale. I love the people at where all the places I've been. But I ultimately I have to please the Lord. That's right. At the end of the day, I gotta look him in the eye. It's like I'm looking you in the eye right now. I gotta look Jesus Christ in the eye. 
and answer for whatever I've done. And so bottom line is, I want to be pleasing to him. Yeah, I, it would be nice if I could please the Lord and these other people too. But ultimately, i got to please him. Yeah, that's right. Uh, tell me about your preaching ministry. How do you preach? Do you, what, what kind of, do you go through books? Do you have topical series? <clears throat> well, both, what do you do? I fell in love with preaching uh, early on and listened to some really good preachers when I was younger back on cassette tapes. Does anybody yeah. remember that? I, I was a and, tapeworm. Yeah, man, me too. <laughs> and I would listen to guys, and inevitably I would sound like them while I was preaching after I listened to yeah. them for a while. I wouldn't preach their stuff, but I'd just get their mannerisms and whatnot. But when I went to Southwestern Seminary, uh, I fell in love with preaching. I took my first preaching course the spring of 1981. Who was your pr professor? Uh, Al Faisal. Yep. And uh, Dr. Faisal and I have stayed close for a long time. But uh, he really... Uh, helped me learn how to preach, to take a text, to break it down, and then to build a sermon on explanation, illustration, application. application. You know, yeah. and, and that's and is that not the fundamentals? It's just a so, time honored for me. And so it's when Grant well. when Grant uh, started preaching, he said, "Dad, how do you preach?" I said, "Explanation, illustration. You know, you explain yeah. what the text said to them. You give it." Uh, just a brief illustration to give some light to, and then you apply it. Where I and and I got uh, somewhere along the way. Really, it was from Herschel Hobbs. He said, "Use the prophetic you." He said, "Don't don't say we need to pray." He said, "Tell them you need to pray." Because he said, "When you say we," he said, "Joe out there saying, well, he's talking to this guy over here." He said, "But when you say you," he said, "Oh, he's talking to me." Yeah. And so that's what I've done for years. And I, I just take a a text and and walk through it now. Another thing, because I memorize scripture and whatnot over the years, I do verse with verse. Now, this can you got to be careful with this. I understand it, but I think if you can do it contextually, mm -hmm. it really strengthens your sermon. I mean, I share a lot of scripture that su is supportive, and uh, but but like you know, I'm walking, I'm going through Revelation right now. Uh, I started in January, just finished yesterday with the uh, the. No, I didn't finish, but I mean, I just. I had a sermon yesterday on the church at Smyrna, or Sardis rather, and uh, and just had a, a great time preaching that. You know, that, that whole thing about you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. Yeah. Wake up. You know, I mean, how can you not preach that? That's, that's got right. That's got to preach all in it, all right? Yeah. And and so what I did was I, I, I just see the outline. I get, I get the text, and then I see the outline, and I get the bones, and then what I attach to the bones are, uh, those are my points, you know, and I do uh, explanation, illustration, application. And after a while, it just becomes natural. And so that's how I preach. Uh, I always, uh, one thing that I, somebody told me to do a long time ago is before you go into the pulpit, preach it in your office. And so you won't be so tied to your notes. Yeah. And so I've done that for years. And I, I tell everybody, you know, when I preach in my office, everybody gets saved. Man, you know? <laughs> yeah. Stephen Olford but, yeah. Uh, did that. He would like. It he, really he, he said that he would preach it to the Lord right. in his office. Right. Uh, yeah. So, do you fully manuscript or do you do? I do an extended outline, detailed outline. Yes, I, I take about 12, 13 pages with me into the pulpit, and I do it on my iPad. Oh, you do? Yeah, on your iPad. Yeah, I've done that for uh, six years. Uh, all right, I'm always afraid of the technology. Has it ever failed you? Anything happened? Well, the good thing is I've got down, guys right down there. They've got a full set of notes if I need it. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. So, that's so smart. Uh, if, if, if it ever goes out, I can just say, uh, you've got, you've got said, a plan. B. Let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Give me my notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what, so what preachers did you listen to that, that fed your soul, that shaped you? Well, one was named Bobby Moore. A lot well, of people, knew, did you Memphis, know Bobby? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Memphis. Yeah. Was, soul winning dude, man. Love yeah, the Lord. Yeah. Fiery. What was I the mean, name of his church? Uh, Broadway. Broadway. Broadway Baptist Memphis, Church. Yeah. They had it going on. They led the uh, Tennessee in baptism several yeah, times. Yeah, Bobby Moore. And he, they would they would have more baptisms sometimes than Bellevue. He loved the Lord. Godly guy. Prayer warrior. Man, just a great guy. And so I started getting his tapes when I was at Union. He was just the big deal, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I listened to him. I listened to Dr. Rogers some. And then, uh, you know, other people along the way. Back then, you had the whole thing with Peter Lord, Jack Taylor, those guys, Manly Beasley. I would listen to yeah. them because Dr. Rogers would have all those guys in every year for a conference. And, you know, and so we would listen to them. Uh, of course, I lo love to listen to Billy Graham, you know, uh -huh. and all. So 
Those are just some of my any heroes. non any non Baptist guys that you listen to. Like I, I was a big Donald Gray Barnhouse fan. I listened. I started listening to Barnhouse. Yeah. when I was young. You know, not I, I when mean, I was younger. No, I. You know, I I listened mostly to to Southern Baptist, Southern Baptist. guys. I'm trying to think. Uh, there may have been somebody along the way. Uh, you know, later on, uh, I would I got to know Jim Cimbala. and uh-huh. uh, now Jim's a, a great guy, he's, but he, he, he he's just he's a, a heart preacher. He just he just talks from his heart. Yeah, that's, that's right. it. That's right. That's a good way to describe him. But he loves the Lord, and God's done an incredible work there at that church. You know uh, who uh, I tell you who else I used to listen to. Everybody knows J. Vernon McGee for his Through the Bible, but his Sunday sermons, they call them, yeah. they, they would play his sermon. They still do. And in fact, you can get them was on the podcast. Was it Pasadena? Is that where uh, it was? It was uh, it, no, it was uh, the downtown Los Angeles. Was called okay. The Church of okay. the Open Door. Okay. You, okay. you remember that big Jesus Save sign in downtown yeah. Los yeah. Angeles used to be there? Yeah. So that was the building of Church of the Open Door. Okay. Uh, R.A. Torrey had pastored there. Wow. And, and, then, uh, and then McGee did. And I, I learned a lot. There, he, his preaching had this emotional arc to it that he, right. you know, just, uh, it still shapes a lot of the way I preach. Right. Uh, and he's a guy that really influenced me and not the through the Bible as much as his Sunday sermons as a pastor and uh, listening to guys like that really have blessed me. Well, you know, I, I want to say this to you because I, I think uh, you and I are at the same place on this. And I'm not trying to be melodramatic or whatever, but I never feel more alive than when I'm preaching. Bingo. I'm with you, man. And I, I love it. Let me tell you. I, 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 could, pre- I could preach five times a day. Uh, me too. Last night, laying in bed. Bring it, baby. I'm, I'm ready. I looked at Tanya. <laughs> I said, last night, I said, you know what? I mean, I, I enjoyed preaching so much yesterday. I preached a really difficult text that I just felt like the Lord opened up to me and I was able to open it up and my people were just in it. I told Tanya last night in bed, I said, if someone would right now say, Get up and preach That's that right. sermon again. I said, I'd do it. In a heartbeat. And Tanya said, you know what? And if you did, I'd get up and listen to it. Amen. And, Amen. Oh, you know, it's just, <laughs> oh baby. People, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, what a grace of God. Amen. We love Amen. doing what God Amen. has tasked us to do. That's right. That's no small thing. That, and I, I can honestly say in all my life of preaching, other than being physically ill, there's never been a Sunday morning that I got up and said, oh, I just don't want to do this. Uh, you know, I, every, I'm like, man. Yeah, I'm like a, a a horse in the gate at the Kentucky Derby. You right. know, like, let, well, I told my guys, going. you know, they're always wanting me to make announcements. I said, look, I don't want to make announcements. I know they're necessary, but I said I want to preach. Yeah. So yeah. I said I'll make the little announcements, but don't don't keep putting all this stuff on me. I want yeah. to preach. You know. Yeah. And I'm I'm laser focused, man. That's what I'm. I'm with do, you. you know? I'm yeah. with you. I love that about you. <clears throat> uh, well, very quickly, tell me about your, your time as president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Was that fun? Was it hard? Was well, you know, I, and when you say this, it may sound like uh, false humility, but I never wanted to do that. In fact, when I came to Bellevue, I said, I'm going to be the first pastor y'all have had that's not the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. I said, I don't, I don't want to do that. It's not my deal. And the Lord just laid on my heart, I want you to do it. And honestly, uh, when J.D. was running, and I, I didn't, I didn't, I just felt like, you know, whatever happens is going to be of the Lord. And if I get it, fine. If I don't, fine, you know, I'm, it wasn't any, And so the way that whole thing played out, uh, I, I was, I went and on that, we were going to a third vote, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, it, and was so, a, it was a strange And deal. so I looked at Donna, I said, I'm out. I'm out. And she said, uh, are you really? I said, yeah, I'm out. I said, I'm going to tell him I'm out. Danny Aiken walks by. He comes over. He said, can I talk to you? I said, yeah. He said, we're in a mess, aren't we? I said, well, no. I'm, I said, I'm not in a mess. <laughs> he said, "He said, why? What do you mean? He said, I said, I'm pulling out. He said, you can't do that. I said, yes, I can. And see, he had gotten more votes the first time. I had gotten more, just barely. Yeah, right. Second, neither both, neither both, getting right. the full majority. No, no, no. Yeah. And so I just didn't want to put the convention through that. I said, I'm out, Danny. I said, I, I, said, I didn't even want, I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to. I said, whatever. He can have it. That's fine. He said, no. And so he and I and James Merritt and uh, there were a couple other guys went and we just talked. And uh, J.D. said, Steve, he said, I think you ought to do it. And I, I said, uh, J.D., I think you ought to do it. He said, no. He said, I'm pulling out. And he said, I want you to do it. And I said, do you really believe this is the Lord? He said, I really do. And everybody around the table did. So, I mean, yeah. That's how it happened. Hey, I mean, first there, of there, all, there was no, there was nothing. Let, let me say that. that is the spirit that Southern Baptists need. Absolutely. Right there. 
Yeah. I'm you not know. bragging on myself. I'm just saying, though, no. that table, there was camaraderie. That's right. I loved everybody in that circle. That's right. I, We're it, all on the same yeah, team. Yeah, it was just right. a matter of, of uh, what's the, the best we were, way to honor the We Lord were fighting now. over who could resign. You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I told him, I said, I didn't want it anyway. <laughs> so, Let me ask you, are you hopeful or pessimistic about the Southern Baptist Convention? I'm hopeful in the Lord. I really am. Me too. And, I, I, you know, I wish we would just stop fussing. Yeah. I just wish we'd stop. It seems like every spring somebody brings up something yeah. and we get into a turmoil and, and then we yeah. have to come to the convention. So I, I don't know. I mean, I know that it's um, there. And, and see, nowadays, the difference, I think, that we're seeing is everybody has a platform with social mm. media. Yeah. They can say anything they want, anytime they want. Yeah, whether it's factual and, or not. Right. And and it's in print. And so, you know, uh, I, I told somebody, I said, I've never been flogged, but I have been blogged. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, uh, but I, I think that um, if we would just focus on what we're talking about here at your church. Yeah. Who's your one? Let's go win some people to the Lord. Amen. Personal. Let's, let's, yeah. let, there are people lost and going to hell. That's right. And let's go tell people about Jesus. And let's go get some Christians and get them grounded in the Word. Let's That's go right. get some guys. Let's go pray together. Let, let's let's help some guys get out of addictions or whatever. You know, Amen. Let's, let's disciple people. There's so much good to do. Why waste your time fussing and fighting all the yeah, time? Yeah, I'm with you, brother. And so I, I just, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't get I, I don't get into all that. I don't yeah. get involved in it. Well, you know what? And then you get called out for being silent on right, certain things. Right, right. It's like you can't win. The, the, whole, the whole first six months of my presidency in the Southern Baptist Convention, people said, where's Steve Gaines? Where's he? I said, I'm not going to be yeah. baited and be drawn into that's, all that stuff. That's exactly right. I, I talked about prayer the first year, and I talked about – in fact, I saw you in Denver, I think. Uh, weren't you yeah. out at the NAM thing yeah. that year? Yeah, I preached on prayer. I preached on prayer all year. And my second year, I preached on evangelism. That's all I wanted to emphasize. Yeah. I said, if you love the Lord, you talk with him and you talk about him. That's right. I'm with <laughs> That's you. That's it, man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, 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 I'm sometimes temporarily pessimistic, but overall, I'm like you. I'm hopeful in the Lord. Hey, this belongs. Just like you said, you don't, you, know, you don't have to be pastor of Bellevue, but you have to honor Jesus. There doesn't have to be a Southern Baptist Convention. Right. But we have to be faithful to Jesus Christ. And right. it just seems to me that if we are faithful to Jesus Christ, we can do this together. Right. And we've got to be able to talk with one another instead of always at each other. Right. And, and if we surrender to the Lordship of Christ, we should be able to get along. I, I just, agree. Uh, 100%. And, and that's why we, we need voices like yours uh, constantly. And I'm grateful to you for the way you use your voice. You are a man of God. You're a man of prayer, the scripture. I love you. And I'm grateful to you for being on Pastor Well. Thank you, man. I love to end with what I call twinkling of an eye around, just to ask a bunch of random questions. Do it. And uh, you just answer however you want. All right. Okay. I always like to ask uh, favorite vacation spot? Hawaii. Wh which island? Uh, the, what's the. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. We've been to about five. Maui? Maui, yes. Maui. Maui. We just went to Maui. All right, Tony and I are Big Island. We, we, yeah, we, we go to the Big Island, yeah. uh, and we can see Maui from where we stay, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. we're Big Island people, and I, I love it. There's just – weather's perfect. It's a great place. We went two years ago and had a great time. Yeah, well, that, that's great. Uh, if you could go anywhere today, take Donna with you, anywhere in the world today, where would it be? Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good place. Uh, do you have a dream car that you would like to – no, I would have a dream truck. Okay. I mean, I'm what a little is bit of a redneck, you know, okay. so uh, I would probably get a really nice Ford. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've got, I've got, I've got a nice Ford. Uh, the church provides me with a nice Ford. Uh, it's a SUV, uh -huh. but I'd really like it. You like a truck. Yeah. Just a yeah. good old truck. Yeah. So uh, one of these days when I retire from Bellevue, I'll get a truck. <laughs> uh, do you remember the first sermon you preached? I do. It was from Matthew chapter six, and it was on seeking first the kingdom of God. And uh, it was uh, George was there that night, little Spring Hill Baptist Church uh, in Nauvoo, Tennessee. We sang for about thirty minutes, and then I preached for about fifteen minutes, and I preached uh, everything I knew about Jesus and God and everything in fifteen minutes. So. Wow! <laughs> do you have a favorite genre of the scripture you like? Like to gospels or or epistle or you know I, I love narrative. it all. Uh, I read the Bible through uh, at least twice a year, and I I love the Bible. Uh, I I love uh, the Book of Acts because it's just so real, and and like you were talking about, you know, that's where you see the good, bad, and the ugly. You know, you see it all. 
you see faithfulness, you see people like in chapter five, Ananias and Sapphira messing up, you know, and you see, uh, you just see the, the whole thing. And I, the, the main thing that I see in there is that you don't have to have all the trappings that we think are necessary. Right. You just have to have the Lord. You have to have prayer. And the main thing is you have to have the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. And go from there. You know, I, I love it that, for instance, in Acts chapter 12, one of my favorite things is Peter's about to be killed like James was the day before or the week before, whatever, and he's sleeping like a baby when the angel wakes him up. Yeah. Isn't that great? Wouldn't yeah. you like to have that peace that passes all understanding? Absolutely. And so I love the book of Acts. I love the I love it all. <laughs> I love it all. Yeah. Do you have a sugar stick sermon? One that you can No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Jesus is Lord, man. And it's out of Philippians, uh, you know, the little hymn there in chapter yeah, in uh, two. five. Uh, yeah, chapter two, verses five through 11. Yeah. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah. Jesus was Lord before he came to the earth. Jesus was Lord while he was on the earth. Jesus is Lord while he was on the cross, and Jesus will be Lord when he comes back. Amen. It, preach, preach. it preaches like a house of fire. Amen. Yeah. That'll <laughs> preach. Well, Steve Gaines, it is a joy, first of all, to know you, and Thank secondly, you. to have you on Pastor Well. Thanks Thank so you. much for all you do for the kingdom and, thank you. and for being with me here today. Thank you so much. Uh, so thank you uh, for being with us and for tuning in on Pastor Well. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you do so on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time on Pastor Well.